Okay, so in the last video, um, we went through an example of what proportional scheduling looked like, and our key idea is that the min compute ratio is going to be our most unfair process, and right now we're only dealing with processes that actually requested um, CPU. We're going to do the ones that didn't request in a later video. Okay, so what does this actually look like for implementation-wise in your assignment? Well, there's um, like five functions that you have to worry about. There's my request CPU, and that takes in M, N, and a process ID. There's st starting proc, which takes a process ID. There's ending proc, also takes in a process ID. There's handle timer interrupt. Okay, and there's schedule proc, which we'll deal with down here. Okay, so my request CPU is what a process calls when it wants to request for um, a certain percentage of the CPU, right? And so um, this is called by a process to ask for m over n of CPU. Cool. And so first, before we do anything, we want to do a couple checks here. We want to make sure that m and n are positive values. You can't request a negative ratio of the CPU because that makes no sense. We want to make sure that m is less than or equal to n, which means that the ratio is less than or equal to 1. You can't ask for more than 100% of the CPU, right? Can't ask for greater than 100%. And finally, we have to check that we don't overschedule. So what that means is we have to keep track of whatever we have um, scheduled so far, so whatever our current utilization is, and then to that we add this new ratio that that process is asking for, m over n. And we want to make sure that that value is less than or equal to 1 or 100%. So don't over schedule. And for that, you're going to have to keep track of what this current utilization means. Cool. So now that we've done all these checks and everything looks good, you can go ahead and store m over n or you can store them separately. Or you can multiply them by 100 and store them that way if you don't like floating points. But you have to associate them for the given PID. And then, this is really important, you have to update your current utilization, right? Because it now includes this new ratio that our process asks for. Okay. And all of these things are a good starting point for what my request CPU needs to do. Um, so what do you need to do in starting proc? Well, we want to initialize all the proc fields. And what do we initialize them to? Well, we established before that our fields were these things. Um, so requested, if a process hasn't requested anything, we can start that at zero. When a process just starts, it hasn't had any running time, so that can start at zero. Same with the lifetime, it just started, so that can start at 0, too. We want to set valid to 1 and PID to whatever the given ID is. And that's all you need to worry about in starting proc. Okay, um, what about ending proc? Ending proc, the most important thing you have to take care of is to make sure that you update utilization, right? If this process is done, its utilization is done. You don't have to like worry about it anymore. If it asks for 50%, that 50% is now free for other processes to use. So just as a note here, something you might want to test. You have process 1 and that asks for 50% and then process 2 and that asks for 50% so you're now full because you have 100% 
and then process two dies. So now your total utilization is back to 50%, and then you can have a third process, process three, that asks for 50%, and this should work. So you should make sure that you're testing that. Okay, cool. Now what about handle timer interrupt? What does that even do? Handle timer interrupt gets called every single quantum. So as many quantums as we have um, gone through, that's as many times as this function gets called. Okay? So um, we're just going to let's let's look at our um, process fields and see how we're going to actually set these. So we have requested set already, right? We set that in my request CPU. Um, running time, we said we're going to worry about when we schedule the process. So in do sketch, um, sorry, in schedule proc. And then a lifetime, we want to increment every single quantum. And I just told you that handle timer interrupt gets called every single quantum. So here is where you want to increment a lifetime for all the existing processes because they have been alive for one more quantum. And remember, we know that they exist because they're valid. So all valid procs. OK? Now, here at this point, you can also calculate um, the utilization and compute ratio. You have everything that you need. So let's go back here. Remember, utilization is running time over a lifetime. Um, we have a lifetime. Running time is stored, and we're going to worry about how to update that in a bit. Um, and then compute ratio is utilization over requested. So you have everything you need to calculate everything. So you could do that in handle timer interrupt. Um, in this example, I'm going to do it in schedule proc, but they amount to the same thing. Utilization and compute ratio. So if you um, compute them here and then you just store them, you can just use them in, ske in schedule proc. So that makes schedule proc a little bit cleaner. You have to just make sure to pro store them in the process structure. OK. Cool. Now, what do we have to do in schedule proc? Well, first, if you didn't already, we want to calculate the utilization and the compute ratio for every process. And you already know how to do that. Just use the formulas um, from part one of the video one or whatever. For all valid procs. OK. Cool. And this is only if you didn't already do it. handle timer interrupt. Okay? Then, remember this big idea that we had? That the minimum compute ratio is the most unfairly treating process. So, we want to go ahead and find that minimum compute ratio. And that's just a normal find min loop. Compute ratio. and find the PID that goes along with that minimum compute ratio. We can call that min PID. And this is the most unfairly treated process. OK? So we calculate the compute ratio. Then we, cal then we find what the minimum compute ratio is. Then, and then we know that that's the process we want to return. So. We want to increment the running time for that process, because it's going to run one more quantum now. And then we just return it, because that's the process that we want to schedule. Schedule most unfairly treatment.
Okay, cool. And that is all you need to do to get your proportional share working for all processes that requested CPU. In the next part, we're going to think about what to do about processes that did not request CPU.